reporting for duty, sir. The man himself. Splendid. Have you ever heard of the immersive sim design philosophy? I wouldn't be surprised if most of you didn't, but what if I told you that it's more than likely that you've played immersive sims before? And what if I told you that this genre gave birth to some of the best and most influential games of all time? Deus Ex, System Shock, Dishonored, Bioshock are some of the most iconic names associated with the immersive sim genre. Which in reality is not really a genre, it's more of a game design philosophy, but we'll still use this term pretty loosely in this video. The similarities between these games might seem obvious if you've played them. If you didn't, it certainly is not as evident. It can also be pretty difficult to get a good grasp at what an immersive sim really is, due to how vague its definition is. For example, some people will put Bethesda's Elder Scrolls and Fallout series in that category, while others won't. But if we want to know more about immersive sims, we have to go all the way back to 1992, with the release of what is widely considered being the first game of this kind, Ultima Underworld. Often cited as the first game to feature full-blown first-person action in a 3D environment, Ultima Underworld was designed as an immersive dungeon crawler, where the unique situations encountered by the players were supposed to make them come up by themselves with adequate solutions. And if the game was part of the Ultima universe created in 1981 by Richard Garriott, its success is largely due to two other legendary game developers, Paul Nureff and Warren Spector. Paul Nureff was the lead game designer of Ultima in the World and co-founder of the company that was yet to be known as Looking Glass Studios, from which the first two Thief and System Shock originated. Whereas Warren Spector was one of the producers at Origin Systems, the company that published Ultima in the World. He was also a fierce supporter of the developers and was, in Nureff's own words, their biggest champion within Origin. Spectre later founded Ironstorm Austins and directed what was at the time his dream project, the critically acclaimed Deus Ex. You're a complete jackass. I don't understand. It's in 2000 that Spectre's Deus Ex took the world by storm. The cyberpunk dystopian game still is to this day one of the most iconic immersive sim there is. It has all the essentials required for the game to be considered an immersive sim. It's a first-person action game, including elements from RPGs, FPSs, platform and stealth games, with an immersive and coherent world full of systemic, non-scripted situations that always obey to the same rules, a complex AI capable of reacting in appropriate ways to the player's actions, an adaptive writing system that changes the story depending on the player's choices, and an open-ended and non-linear game design that allows the players to choose how to get to their objectives and in which order, all the while allowing gameplay emergence. That freedom of choices and actions, especially apparent when there's emergent gameplay, is in my opinion the core of the immersive sim genre. For those of you who don't know what emergent gameplay is, it's basically the fact of giving to the players different mechanics that can be used and can react to one another in different manners, in order to allow the players to come up by themselves with new ways to progress throughout the game. In other words, in an immersive sim, when the player faces a problem, instead of the game itself giving the player one or several solutions to the problem, it will give tools to the players so that they can come up by themselves with solutions that sometimes the developers didn't even foresee. That's what makes Immersive Sim so special. Instead of the game offering a one-way monologue to the player, a conversation between the software and the player is built, and it quickly becomes a challenge who will prevail, man or man-made machine. I love Deus Ex, and it still probably is to this day my favorite game of all time. But to be honest, one inspector wasn't the only big name behind Iron Storm's success. Another one being Deus Ex lead designer, Arvis Smith. Arvis Smith later joined in 2008 Arcane Studio, the developers of some excellent immersive sims such as Arx Vitalis and Dark Messiah of Might and Magic, as a co-creative director to work on the 2012 released Dishonored. Alongside Deus Ex Human Revolution, released one year earlier, Dishonored paved the way for a revival of the genre. But recently, the disappointing commercial results of Deus Ex Mankind Divided, Prey and the masterpiece that is Dishonored 2, as well as the poor critical reception of Underworld Ascendant, might be putting the immersive genre in jeopardy. Hopefully, the remake of the first System Shock and the brand new System Shock 3, on which both Paul Nureff and Warren Spector are working on, will be the beginning of another revival. In my opinion, there's nothing quite like immersive sims. It's mind-blowing to me how such an exclusive genre managed to give birth to so many masterpieces. 
and how just an handful of game managed to be so influential for the video games industry. And considering how now most AAA games end up being nothing more than straightforward roller coasters, it would be nice to see more and more games treating players with respect. Because after all, what's the point of playing video games if you're not given the freedom to play them the way you want to? That's it for this video, I hope you liked it. If you did, leave a comment below and consider subscribing. That'll be all for today, see you next time.